a comprehensive look at trends, fund profiles, and more in exploring ETFs. It seems as though 5G has made its way to the ETF space, and our research director for ETFs, Nina Mishra, is going to fill us in on exactly what that means. So this 5G thing is going to be around for a while, huh? Yes, so the technology implementation has just started, and it's going to be many years till it becomes mainstream, but mm. of course there's a lot of excitement, yeah. maybe a lot of hype too about the technology. So let's take a look at what exactly this technology means. Okay. So International Telecommunication Union, uh, which is a UN body uh, that has set a uh, set of requirements uh, for the 5G technology. Mm -hmm. It should offer download speeds of at least 20 gigabits per second, response time of less than one millisecond, which means no response time, mm -hmm. immediate uh, response, and can it should connect at least one million devices in one square kilometer area. And if you compare that to what we have currently, 4G, it means that it's going to be a game changer once this technology is fully implemented. Uh, it's probably going to change the way we work, the way we commute, the way we communicate, everything. <laughs> Great, yeah. that's exactly what I want. <laughs> More changes in my life. Yes, and uh, it's going to provide a big boost to technologies like the Internet of Things, uh, virtual and augmented reality technologies, self-driving mm. cars, smart cities, everything. smart factories and yeah. everything. So yes, it's going to be a game changer. So the major telecom carriers have already begun. Yes. So investors should remember that we have, we are just seeing early stages of implementation of this technology. Mm -hmm. uh, Verizon started uh, rolling out this technology in limited areas of Chicago and Minneapolis last month. AT&T is uh, starting service trials in 19 cities, and uh, Sprint, is, uh, Sprint is also planning to launch in nine cities by the end of this quarter. And if you look at uh, telecom, um, telephone makers, smartphone makers, uh, Samsung was the first one to come out with a 5G mm -hmm. smartphone. Mm -hmm. uh, Apple recently, uh, they settled their many years dispute with Qualcomm. So we could see a 5G uh, iPhone maybe next year or sure. the year after next. Uh, one of the biggest players in this technology, technology the Chinese uh, telecom giant Huawei, is privately held and they are facing sanctions from the US government and many other governments too. Uh, and uh, so that means that uh, uh, this road to 5G, till 5G becomes mainstream, could be bumpy at times. Investors should not expect immediate profit by investing in these companies. Sure. So it's going to be a longer term investment, a longer term theme to consider. So in the case of Sprint, uh, their um, combination with T-Mobile has hit some stumbling blocks as well. Yes. Is that going to cause uh, a delay in their rollout, That's, you that's think? possible. I haven't, uh, I don't remember reading anything from uh, yeah. Sprint Management or on uh, their plans after the merger or no merger. That's going to be interesting, yes. too. <laughs> um, so maybe this technology will even talk for us one day. Who knows? Yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> So there are two of these ETF products in this space, right? First one is Defiance Next Generation Connectivity ETF. This is a very interesting ticker, 5G. Very easy to remember. <laughs> yeah. It is the first ETF to focus on the 5G theme. And it made its uh, debut on 4th of March this year and has already gathered 82 million in assets so far, so very popular with investors. Very reasonable expense ratio of 30 basis points. Most thematic ETFs, they charge like 60, 70, 80 basis points. So this is relatively very attractively priced for a thematic ETF. Now to learn more about this ETF, you can go to the quote page on zax.com and uh, you uh, from there, you can also go to the external homepage, the Defiance website, um, web page for this ETF, and learn more about this ETF. Uh, now, what 
uh, what kind of companies you expect to benefit uh, from this technology, those you would see in this ETF. Let's take a look. Uh, so it holds uh, companies in the following categories, uh, carrier grade networking equipment, including cellular antennas, routers, mobile network operators, satellite-based communications, broadband chips, radio technology, wireless network test, cloud computing equipment, and also the data center reads. Uh, these are the kind of companies which are either developing this technology mm. or implementing this technology, or will benefit from uh, implementation of this technology. It has uh, 57 holdings as of now. About 78% of assets are invested in US companies, the rest international companies. Looking at the top holdings, Comscope, Xilinx, Skyworks, Ericsson, these are among the top holdings of this ETF. All right, then there's the First Trust Index, Next G ETF. The ticker is NXTG. Now, this was earlier a telecom ETF with the ticker phone. Uh, uh, I see. Last month, uh, on the 29th of May, they changed their focus and the index of this ETF, and now it holds companies which are related to 5G technology. Mm. Uh, it is a bit more expensive, uh, 70 basis points, and assets are 123 million because, as I mentioned, it is an older ETF. It has been around for a while, but its uh, focus changed very recently. Now, again, to take a look at the CTF, you can go to the code page on zax.com. You can read our articles, reports, etc., for the ETF. And you can also go to the external homepage, the first trust web page for this ETF. Now, you will see the similar kind of companies in this ETF too. Chip makers, of course, and they are used in phones and other equipments related to 5G. So sure. chip makers account for almost 25% of the portfolio. And then telecommunication, other telecommunication equipment, specialty REITs that will benefit from implementation of that technology, mobile telecommunication, computer hardware, and services. Those kind of companies you will see in this ETF. Now, this is uh, more global, has more international exposure compared to uh, the earlier product that we discussed. U.S. accounts were about 24%, and rest is international. And this is a global theme, so uh, 5G is being implemented all over the world. Asian mm -hmm. countries in particular, Japan, China, South Korea, they are, you know, uh, getting a lot of support from this, uh, from their governments, and they want to implement these technologies and get ahead in this race. So you will see a lot of those companies, too, in this ETF. Uh, AMD, uh, a chip make prominent chip, chip maker, then Keysight, Equinix, Coresight, REIT. These are among the top holdings in the ETF. Are the foreign countries leading the pack right now? There is a lot of competition in the area. Uh, China has made 5G a part of their five-year plan. Oh. Uh, Trump administration wants the U.S. to lead the race whereas Japan, South Korea, China, because they missed on the earlier 4G technology mm. race, so they want to get, get ahead in the 5G race now. Definitely so, but, but some competition. Yeah, there's, there, there's a lot of international competition in yeah. this space. So you have a comparative uh, performance chart for both of these ETFs? Uh, I have the comparative performance chart of just the 5G with the S&P 500 index. I did not include uh, the other first stress product here because it, that just changed Change, it, okay. its focus so very early to judge its performance and even for the defiance product since it has been around uh, just since March it is too early mm. and in fact you will see that it has underperformed the S&P 500 ETF. It is down about 4.5 percent since inception whereas the S&P 500 index is up about 3.5% during this period. And the reason is that 
chip makers have a lot of exposure to China and many com chip companies were beaten down because of the trade war mm -hmm. concerns. And so that is why I had mentioned that this is a longer term investing theme. So if you are comfortable with the volatility, mm. then only you should look at it. And uh, we will see the impact of the technology uh, maybe starting next year, but it will become mainstream only after maybe three, two, three, four, five years. Who knows? We Interesting. Will see. Yeah. Yeah. Do you own either of these ETFs? I do not. Okay. Don't forget, always more ETF information in that section of our website, zax.com. Use the funds tab in the top toolbar, it'll help guide you to the ETF section. And use the podcast link button at the bottom of the home page if you want to hear. Nina's ETF Spotlight podcast. She has a lot of interesting guests who she talks with on a regular basis and covers a lot of other interesting ETF topics in on that, that note, I as well. I would like to point out that I did a podcast with the uh, manager of 5G ETF oh. and he described the technology, its implementation and his product and other ETFs too. So that's an interesting podcast. And they should be up there now? Or? It is it is already up. It's okay. up for, so, a, for a few weeks. Uh -huh. Something more for the viewers to look uh, out for on zax.com. With Nina, in the meantime, I'm Terry Ruflo.